Okay, so this is a video that I should have probably re-recorded a long, long time ago because shortly after I made my Obliterator video originally in 2019, something like two years ago now, I got a couple of things wrong. I know, I know, I know. I, I don't usually make mistakes in my videos, but this was a pretty easy one to make. And I'll get into it later. It's not the most important thing. It doesn't really even matter that much. But I want to talk about the Obliterator because I want to make a video on all the best snipers in the game. And the Obliterator being one of the best snipers and being one of my most incorrect best perks videos is uh, definitely a, a thing I wanted to cross off my list. Now, when I originally recorded it, oh, this was back when military llamas were purchasable through tickets. Yes, they have been in the V-Buck pool for a very long time, which means the only way to get them were, was by spending V-Bucks, you know, hey, use, uh, use code MIST at your checkout if you do, or researching it from the collection book, which is the more reasonable way to get it. You can just go all the way down here, scroll down to the obliterator, boom, get a schematic, easy peasy, and you're, uh, you're cruising. Now, the thing is, my video wasn't the most incorrect. I recommended decent perks, but I had false assumptions. So first and foremost, Obliterator's key use are defenders. I have a whole video on defenders, link in the description if you guys want to get into all of that. But the key weapon that I recommend is the Obliterator. Now I know the Obliterator is very similar to the Neon Sniper. This is nothing I haven't mentioned before, but the Neon Sniper takes energy cells and I think it does less damage per shot. I might even be wrong. What is it doing? 68,000 and then this one is regular. It's like 70,000. So I think I think the Neon Sniper is like a little less expensive, but it's um, or a little less damage, but it's it's way more expensive. I know that the perks are different here too, so it's not even comparable. But uh, using batteries to craft these and energy cells to shoot them makes it quite expensive. Uh, back in the day, bacon used to be used for the energy ammo, and even without that, it's still kind of a uh, a tall ask. So what I want to say is that the obliterators are are usually used for defenders, and my assumption long long ago was that defenders always aim for the head. This was told to me by a higher level player. I trusted him, and so I just went with it with the video. And that's kind of where it wasn't the biggest deal because my recommendation was to roll double headshot if you're using this yourself or with a defender. And nowadays I'd recommend the general crit build and we'll get into all the specific perks later on. So that's sort of just the uh, the correction I wanted to make. And yeah, there aren't really any mistakes in any of my other best perks videos floating around. If it was serious, I would have fixed it by then. And that's pretty much kind of it. So let's get into why the Obliterator is phenomenal. This shouldn't be news to anybody. I think this is an old enough weapon to where you all kind of know exactly where this is going, but let's get into it. So first and foremost, this weapon is a phenomenal pickaxe because it can one-shot walls. It can one-shot multiple walls in one shot. It's uh, a little tricky to use on individual targets because it's a sniper, so it's not a shotgun. It's not going to shoot fast enough to eliminate crowds of enemies. It's really not even a primary weapon, and that's where I'm going to be a little silly in today's video. I recorded a lot of gameplay for the background of this video, so we're not just staring at my armory because I wanted to have something going on, and I built a sniper loadout. Now, I don't recommend using this very much or uh, ever, but I built a loadout specifically to buff the obliterator. Now, it's not a primary weapon. This is never going to be something you should ever be running around shooting stuff with. I recommend if you're going to have like a regular old boring soldier loadout like this one, an obliterator would be a fantastic secondary for one-shotting mist monsters. Uh, it's not really going to do that anymore after like the 94 zones or maybe even the 100 zones. After these, in my experience, you are going to start taking multiple shots to uh, one-shot a mist monster, but... Uh, so long as it is one shotting to the head with double headshot, it's a pretty good secondary. But I built the loadout specifically to buff the obliterator just to have a little bit of fun with it. But that's just sort of a side note for today's video. And I wanted to say that if you're going to be perking it for taking out builds, you might want to look at a double fire rate build. I think the reload perk is definitely a major quality of life, but I built a double fire rate just to see how it would feel. I'm going to stick with the reload perk. I think bringing that down to two seconds instead of, I believe, three seconds. I don't even know what it was. Uh, I don't want to spend more reperk to double check, but you'll see the number. I feel like it's a lot easier to just use a regular fire rate. And there is a thing called diminishing returns. So that second fire rate is going to speed things up a lot less than the first one did. So it's really not going to make that huge of a difference. But if you're using a weapon to just annihilate walls and remove things in your way, 
I've always looked towards a cannonade. You might not have this weapon available and it's a little expensive as a rocket launcher, but it's kind of a cheaper cannon and it just, it's super, super useful. And I, I feel like the obliterator is best known for one-shotting walls, but that isn't even its best strength. If you're going to be using this for regular damage, there are a couple of ways to perk this. So the fire rate, crit rating, crit damage build I'm using here isn't even what I'd recommend. There are a couple of options to go. So if you have really good aim, which I would imagine you do if you're using a sniper, double headshot is absolutely what i recommend always make sure you're aiming for the head roll the double headshots on this and you know pop them in the head simple as that the six perk also comes into play for this where the headshot eliminations cause an explosion if god forbid you are using this as your primary weapon i do not know why headshot eliminations causing an explosion is basically the only way you're going to get area of effect damage i know you can shoot through enemies but it does not shoot clean or fast enough as the xenon bow does to uh, you know get away with that kind of thing and on that topic i can add shooting through targets is uh kind of a tricky thing there are like several layers where you know some can shoot through enemies but not walls and some can shoot through like the shielder husks but not everything else then there are a few weapons in the game like the neon sniper the uh the xenon bow the ghost pistol and the obliterator that can shoot through everything walls different types of terrain they can shoot through the shielder husks they can even shoot through the riot huskies which is actually a really big deal to have those guys not be a problem or necessarily even in your way at all in the middle of your missions is a super nice thing to have especially for defenders who can't think like a human can but we'll get onto that later so the headshot eliminations causing an explosion can be a really nice bonus five headshots in a row is only if you're a god if this is a six perk that you can activate reliably then uh teach me your ways please and then the rest of these are just standing still that is not a bonus that i really recommend for a human we'll get into the rest of that later so if you're using this just for running around the map i recommend double headshot if you want to be an absolute nutter which you'd have to be if you're using an obliterator as your primary you can run double crit damage and then reload and crit rating and run like a totally rocking out build that would be really really tricky you'd be firing very very slow but it would definitely have a lot of very consistently high damage crit shots going on you'd probably be hitting for the millions i i don't know why you'd want to do that i will add however those extra crit damage shots will be very useful for like the storm king fights if you're somebody who doesn't have the bundle bus i did actually use an obliterator to defeat the candy valley storm king but that was long ago and you can pretty much do that with any perks on your obliterator and i think the most well-rounded would be the fire rate crit rating crit damage that is why i have these perks this way this is exactly the the perks that I use to hand off to my defenders. They just shoot relatively quicker and uh, they crit sometimes and it's a really nice bonus to have. If you're looking for specific perks on the defender, once again, that video is linked down below. That gets way more into it. So let's get into the fun part. Defenders are where obliterators shine. It is the only reason that I ever even think about the obliterator. It's the only time that I ever practically use it. So let's just talk about one thing I want to get out of the way right away. There are new six perks where standing still can grant extra miss monster damage or regular damage. I have not found a consistent way to get defenders under this cone. It is rare, if never, that they even spawn in the exact middle of their pad. So if you can get a defender to stand under a cone, then they won't move and they can shoot with that extra damage bonus consistently. I am not aware of any method to get them under that cone consistently. If somebody can detail a nice comment that will lay out a strategy for that, I will pin it in this video's comment section. But until then, I can never recommend recommend these standing still perks however the headshot eliminations cause an explosion is perfectly fine it doesn't really matter because defenders are meant to just sort of stand up there and clean up the mess uh in this gameplay i recorded at a time when visually the obliterators are shooting like a shotgun it's my understanding that they are only shooting like one line one sniper shot i don't know why it looks like that but it's going to look a little confusing so ignore that please but essentially we got some really good footage of them shooting essentially straight through the floor and that is how i use defenders all the time i set up three of them in a four player mission and they just work because obliterators can shoot through walls and it's a super nice thing to have because the defenders aren't going to be blocked by your trap tunnels they're not going to be blocked by your defenses they can shoot straight through the uh the riot huskies straight through the, sh the shielders the bubbles that they have going on and being able to have defenders just hit everything not only everything but with a decent weapon like the obliterator makes it a very well-rounded pick for those defenders and makes this weapon extremely viable 
Now, of course, I am recommending this a crit build because, like I said, defenders, to my knowledge, are not hitting headshots extremely consistently. If ever that changes, or if I'm totally wrong, then double headshot would be the most consistent damage if they're hitting headshots. So I think crit damage, fire rate is a nice, well-rounded build. If you want your defenders to be super, super safe on ammo and not cost as much as they need to, then honestly, probably a crit build, like crit rating, double crit damage, and then take off the reload and maybe just put on another crit rating perk. That way you're critting the most often and you're shooting super slow. I wouldn't recommend that for practical defense because honestly, let's be real. If you're setting up three defenders with three obliterators, every single game for like 10 of your 160s you can probably afford the more practical build but hey if you want to be the most ammo efficient this is not the most this is not the highest damage this is not the most efficient way to play i'm just saying the most ammo safe you know use as little durability as possible double crit rating double crit damage would work i would never recommend that though it's just a recommendation if you are uh, really really scarce on the materials and you want to enjoy defenders without spending as much but yeah that just about wraps it up if you guys want to support the channel feel free to use code mr at your checkout i really do appreciate it uh i record these videos on stream a lot of times so twitch Link down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a nice day. <laughs>